back to another MGD Project video tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be showing you guys how to make the game Globetrotter. Now basically, you'll be standing on top of the earth as it rotates, and it's your job to get from one side to the other without hitting any of the obstacles. But before we begin, we're going to need you guys to go into the description of this video and click on the download link and download the folder Globetrotter. Now save this to either your desktop or your downloads folder. Once you've got the file, you should see it will have an earth object, a character with some animations, and a flag. All right, let's dive into it. So I open up Construct 3, and we're going to start a new project. We're going to call it Globetrotter. And make sure it's SD Landscape 16 by 9. All right, we're going to do our initial project cleanup. So we're going to change the, the size of our layout to 854 times 480. And we're going to rename our layout and event sheet. So we're going to call our layout level one. But we're going to call our event sheet something different this time. So we're going to call it game EVT. This is because later on we'll be adding new level layouts but we won't be adding any more event sheets for the games. All of the levels will use exactly the same event sheet. Cool. Let's add our first object, which will be the globe. So right click insert object. It's going to be a sprite called globe. And we're going to load it from the file globe trotter. So mine is on my desktop. And we're going to import earth. We don't need to edit anything about its looks, and you'll have a nice big earth on your screen. Now we need to position it. To position it, simply click on it, and we're going to change its position variable on the left hand side to 425, 835. Just like that. We only want to see the top of the globe as it spins. Now let's add a function in there to make it spin. Now this is pretty simple. All we're going to do is click on our globe again, add a behavior, add new behavior, and it's called rotate. Now as you can see, the icon on the rotate tool is rotating to the um, clockwise. So it's rotating to the right, but we want the earth to rotate to the left so the objects come at us from right to left. So to do that, we need to make sure we have our globe selected and we need to change the speed from 180 to negative to uh, 25. This will mean instead of going 180 units to the right, it'll go negative 25 units, which means it'll be going to the left. Now we're simply going to run this and see if it behaves the way we want. And that's perfect. Now that we've got our globe in, let's get our player. To do that, we simply insert a new object and we're looking for a sprite player. I'm going to load it in from a file instead of drawing it ourselves. I'm going to load in the animation frame idle. So we're pretty zoomed in right now. So I'm going to use the zoom out tool at the top of the screen right here. Perfect. Now that we have our idle animation, let's add our other two animations. To do this, we right click in the empty space in the animation frame section at the bottom. We should get the option add frame at the top and it'll add an empty frame called frame one. Click on it and then open another file from the folder and we're gonna insert jump. Now that we've got jump, we're gonna repeat the process. Right click in the empty space, add frame, click on frame two, open from a folder and we're gonna get the file called Ball. Awesome. Now we're going to edit some of the collision polygons here. So to do this, make sure we click on the collision polygon tool. If you can't see your tool, remember to move this up and down. Sometimes, as you can see, you can hide some of your tools. So just drag this bar a little bit down and it should expose it. Click on frame two, which is the falling frame. And you'll see that he's got a collision polygon at his feet. We just want to move that up a bit. So it's more, it looks more like it's jump animation. 
Perfect. The last thing we want to do before we leave is click on the animation one in the animation section at the top right. And with that selected, you'll get some properties here. Now we want to change speed to zero. This basically means instead of automatically going through all of our, um, all of our frames, we have to manually cycle through them. Cool. Our player is pretty big, so we're just going to put it on top of our world and resize it a bit. Now to resize, all you do is hold shift, click in the corner and drag. Perfect. I'm just about that size. Now that he's in our world, let's give him some behaviors. So today's behavior is going to be platformer. So to add behavior, if you've gotten, you just click on your sprite, come to the left hand side of your screen and click on behaviors. We're going to add the behavior platformer. And we're going to change one property. So make sure you keep him selected, come to the left hand side and we're going to take off default controls. We only want him to jump, we don't want him to be able to move left and right. Now, as you know, with a platformer, you need something to stand on, a solid. So instead of making the whole globe solid, what we're going to do is we're just going to make one block solid invisible underneath him. So right click, insert new object. It's going to be called a sprite, called platform. Select any color and get your paintbrush tool and just quickly make a box. Now, you don't need to make this beautiful at all because it's going to be invisible and just simply put it directly underneath his feet so it looks as if he's standing on the world. Cool. Now with our platform selected, we're going to turn off this property called initial visibility. With it unchecked, it means when you run your game, this box is invisible. Now, before we move on to the next video, let's quickly do our player movement. So we're going to come over to our game. Uh, before that, we need to add in our keyboard because our player is going to jump on um, spacebar down. So we're going to right click, insert a new object. It's under input and we're looking for a keyboard. Cool. Now we're going to come to our game event sheet. And we're going to add an event. Keyboard on key pressed spacebar. The action is going to be player simulate control, which is under the platform. And it's going to be simulate jump. Now our player can jump, but he's always going to have the idle animation playing unless we add some code. So we're going to add a few more events. And it's going to be player. Our first one is going to be is on floor, which basically means if he's standing on a solid object, He's going to be playing this frame. So we need to add an action on this. And it's going to be player, set frame, and we're going to set the frame number to zero. Now you want to click on the tab and copy and paste this three times. To do this, you just click on the, mo <clears throat> the most left hand side of the event and it'll highlight it all. Right click again and go copy and then paste and then paste again. Now the second one will be his jumping animation. So we're going to double click on the event and we're going to change it to is jumping. And then we're going to change the action to set the frame to one. The third event will be is falling and the action will be frame number two. Now let's give this a try. As you can see, my player fell through the world, which means he was too high. Sorry, he was too low into our object, so I'm just going to move him up a little bit, and then press play. Oh, as you can see, I added the block, but I forgot to add solid onto it. Now, this is a good lesson when programming, is never forget to add behaviors. So we're going to add a behavior to our block now, and we're going to call it solid. Now, let's give this a try. Now that we have our player added to our globe, let's add some objects to make the game more fun. 
So the first thing I'm going to add is a way to end the game. So we're going to insert a new object. I'm going to go down to Sprite. I'm going to call it Flag. And we're going to load it from a file. And we're going to load Flag. Now, as you can see, the collision polygons are really bad. So we're going to fix those. Again, zoom out. Make sure that the polygons are selected. And then we're going to drag them all out to the side. Just like that. Cool. It's pretty big, so I'm going to reduce it again. And I'm going to put it where we want to finish, which is at the end, right there. So we have to go all the way around the globe and then touch the flag. Now, we probably need some more objects, so I'm going to add in a spike as well, just to increase some difficulty. Right now, there's actually no difficulty. So, spike. And I'm going to use my line tool to draw one. So I pick a nice color. I'm going to choose a dark blue. Make sure a line tool selected. Fill up with my paint bucket. Fix the lines. Cool, all done. Now just make sure we fix the polygons, so we want to make sure it's only touching the blue. We're done. Nice spike. So now I'm going to start decorating my map with spikes. So I'm only going to add one for now, and then I'm going to do the functionality first. So we need the, the spikes sticking out of the earth. But as you can see, the earth is a ball, so we're going to have to tilt our spikes. So when you put them down, you want to go over on the left-hand properties, and you're looking for angle and you want to start increasing that so 15 is too small if you just click and hold down on 15 or the, whatever your angle is and then drag to the left or right it will start rotating the triangle so i found that about 30 degrees here is good cool so now we've got our first spike added and our flag so now we're going to add some groups to make sure we can get the right behaviors and functions we want from these objects. So for this part, you're going to make sure you're going to have to make sure that you're logged in. So we're going to put on the board a code for you to enter so you can log in. Now, the way you do that is at the top right, you'll have something up here that will say guest. And if you click on it, there'll be an item in the menu that will say um, enter in passcode. Once you've entered that in, you can start creating families. So we want to come to the right hand side and right click on our families and go add family. And we're going to add the flag and the spike to our family. We're going to call this family objects. Now with our family of objects selected, we're going to come to the left hand side and click on family behaviors. We're going to add a new behavior and we're going to be looking for the pin behavior. Now, what adding, adding behaviors to a family means that every object in the family will share that behavior. It's much faster than um, giving each individual object a behavior if they're all going to have it anyway. Now, this is half done. Now we just need the code to actually make it stick to the globe. So we're going to our event sheet. I'm going to add an event system on start of layout. We're going to say add action objects, and we're going to say pin to object, position and angle, make sure position and angle is selected, and we're going to choose the object globe. Now at the start of the layout, these two objects will be pinned, and they will rotate with the globe. Let's try that out. As you can see, the position and angle are both pinned. And you'll go all the way around the globe until you hit the flag. Now, it's as easy as copy and pasting the spike and changing the angles to add more. You don't need to add any more code than that to get more spikes. And we'll program all of the collisions next video. Now that we've got our spike and our flag rotating with our planet, let's add in some collision events. So we're going to go to our event sheet. 
going to add an event flag on collision with another object. We're going to choose the player. And then we're going to say system go to next layout. So we're not going to go to layout um, because we want to be able to reuse this event sheet. So we just want to move to the next. So we're going to go go to next slash previous layout. And we're going to make sure it's next. Cool, that's all we need to do. Now let's add another collision event for the spike. So spike on collision with player. And for this one, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Whenever they die, they're going to go back to level one. So we're going to add action. System. It's going to be go to layout. Layout level one. So as they hit the flag, they'll keep going up more and more levels. And then as soon as they die, they come back to level one. Cool. Now that we've got the basic objects we need for our game, let's introduce a HUD element. So a HUD is just something that displays the current state of the game. So we want to create something that shows what level you're up to. So every time you hit the flag, the level will change and you'll get a display up here telling you which level you're up to. So let's insert a new object. We're going to get a text object. I'm going to call it level text. We'll just put it up the top here. Make it a little bit bigger. Cool. Now with it selected, you'll be able to change some properties at the bottom left hand side. So we want to change the font, sorry, the font size to 30. We want to horizontally center it and we want to vertically center it. Cool. Now that we've got our text object in our game, let's work on doing the programming behind it. So first we're going to need a variable, just something to count what level we're up to. So in your event sheet, right click at the bottom and add global variable. We're going to call it level. And its initial value is going to be 1. Because you start at level 1. So we want to display what level it is. And the only time we ever update that visually is when the layout starts. Every time a new level is spawned, um, yeah, every time we hit the flag and we go to the next layout, we'll always go to the start of the layout. So we're going to add our code on start of layout. We're going to add an action, level text, and we're going to set text. Now this is quite complicated, so make sure you're watching. Inside of the quotation marks, we want to write level. And give, um, before you put a space, put a colon and then a space. Add another space after the speech mark and you want to hold shift and press 7 on your keyboard and you'll get ampersand which is and and then you want to add your variable which is called level so it looks just like that question mark level colon and then a space and then after the, the next question mark we put an ampersand and then the global variable cool now let's change this variable so whenever we hit the flag, we go up a level. So we need to add one to our level variable. So let's add an action here. System, add to, level, and we're going to add one to the level every time they hit the flag. Now what we're going to do is when a player hits a spike, we go back to level one. So we need to reset this variable back to one. So we're going to add an action on the end of the collision with the spike. System. And it's going to be set value this time. And we're going to set the value, <clears throat> the value of level to one. Cool. If we press play and we start, it should be level one. Now that we can count levels, let's actually add some levels in our game. Now this is really, really simple to do. All we're going to do is come to the top right hand side of our screen. We're going to right click on level one and we're going to duplicate the layout and it'll automatically change its name to level two. We can do the same to create a level three. And all you do is double click inside of these layouts and change some of the spikes around, maybe increase the difficulty. You might even increase the speed that the earth is rotating. It's up to you. Let's create some power-ups for our player to collect to make the game more interesting. So I'm gonna create two power-ups in this game. One will make the earth spin faster and the other one will give the player the ability to double jump. So first thing we're going to do is insert our power-up objects. So they're going to be sprites. 
I'm going to call the first one power up and then I'm going to call it um, speed. My circle object and if you just hold shift and click in the middle and drag out you'll make a, a nice circle. That's all you need. Change its collision polygons. The, fast way, the fastest way to change a collision polygon is just to right click in the middle and click guess the polygon shape and you'll get a nice shape there. Now instead of making another one, I'm just going to clone it. And then I'm going to rename my clone. Power up. Um, we'll call it D jump or double jump. And I'm going to change the look of double jump to red. Cool. Let's get them both in our screen and make them a lot smaller. Make them relatively the same size, and then you can put them around your map. Now, now that we've introduced new objects, we need to make sure that they're rotating with the Earth as well. So we need to edit our objects family. So again, you just click on the object family, right click, edit family, and we're going to add both of these. That way they rotate with the Earth. Cool. Now let's do the collisions. So add an event. We'll start with our double jump. So when the power up double jump is on collision with the player. And you can do this either way around. You can do when the player hits the double jump or when the double jump hits the player. It doesn't matter. We're going to add an action on the end. And it's going to be player. And we're going to scroll down to its platform behavior. And we're going to go set double jump. And we're going to set it to enabled. And then we're going to add another event for power up speed on collision with player same as before and the action this time is going to be globe scroll down to rotate and we're going to click on set speed and we're going to set the speed to negative 35 this time so the speed will be 10 units faster than it was before and that's all you need to do to add power ups to your game